The grim dark galaxy of the 41st millennium is full of creepy and obscure mysteries, strange people, places, and objects that defy all logical explanation. Every insight we gain leaving us only with hundreds of new unanswered questions. One such mysterious region can be found in the core of Jericho's Reach, an area of space haunted by a vast crimson anomaly, a blasphemous tumor upon reality that bathes the surrounding sector in arterial light and subjects any foolish enough to venture too close to a whole plethora of supernatural phenomena, including the perverse inversion of space and time. I speak, of course, of the Haddock's Anomaly, a phenomena that despite the exhaustive efforts of the Imperium's brightest minds, remains unclassifiable and incomprehensible. Now, the anomaly itself is already a perplexingly supernatural enigma, but when you take into account the long list of truly bizarre and downright terrifying events that can tie themselves directly back to it, it all adds up for a perfectly grimdark mystery. But what exactly is the Haddock's Anomaly? What kind of crazy effects does it have on the people that witness it? What are some of the theories behind what it is and how it came to be? And ultimately, what does its existence mean for the future of the galaxy? Well, in this video, we're gonna get to the bottom of all those mysteries and more. But before we get into it, a quick shout out to this video's sponsor. Have you ever wondered if the Sinister Six could withstand the Human Torch's supernova? Or what about if Star-Lord's dancing could distract the X-Men long enough for Ultron to finish them off? Well, now we can finally find out the answer to these hotly debated questions with the sponsor of this video, Marvel Strike Force. Marvel Strike Force is a comic book fan's dream come true, as it allows you to assemble your dream team of legendary heroes and villains from across the multiverse in order to face down enemy crews in breathtaking strategic battles. Not only is this game absolutely chock full of amazing heroes and villains to collect and battle with, but you can also outfit and upgrade each and every one of them in order to strengthen and hone their abilities to dominate your enemy. The game combines turn-based strategy elements with exciting real-time combat in order to create a gameplay experience that's both challenging and rewarding, but also easy to pick up and play. And there are a ton of different game modes, from campaigns, arena modes, massive weekly alliance battles, raids, and even the Cosmic Crucible, where you and your squad will have to compete against other players in a massive tournament. And fair warning, this isn't a game where one OP character or squad ends up dominating forever. The developers are dedicated to balance and are constantly updating the game, meaning that the meta is always shifting. There's always something new happening in Marvel Strike Force, as the game has an array of engaging campaigns and regular events. You can dive into a rich storyline and battle across iconic locations from across the Marvel Universe while facing off against some truly legendary foes. Download the game for free today by clicking on the link in the description of this video or scanning my QR code here on the screen. When you do and you go to log in, you'll unlock both Captain Marvel and Miles Morales for free. Be quick though, as these characters are only going to be available until December 31st. Big thanks to Marvel Strike Force for sponsoring this video. The Haddock's Anomaly, as it has come to be known, was first discovered by a rogue trader of the same name, Emmanuel Haddock's, within the core of the Jericho Reach section of the galaxy. You see, for most of his life, this guy operated in the vicinity of Charadon, but at one point, the realm of his birth was invaded by the Arch Arsonist. He decided to use this as an opportunity to establish himself in a different part of the galaxy, and around this time, the warp storms that had originally engulfed the lost Jericho sector had finally broken, allowing for safe passage. This was a chance of a lifetime to be the first rogue trader operating in a potentially highly lucrative section of space, so he seized the moment. However, what he encountered when his ship first broke from the warp was something that in his journals he described like a rose suspended in the firmament. It was a massive, roiling cloud of crimson energy, like a giant bloody spot in the void. He mistakenly thought this thing was a nebula, and always an egotistical man, he named it after himself. Now, up until this point, the records that he kept of his day-to-day -day life were not really anything particularly out of the ordinary. It may be a couple of activities here or there that bordered on heretical, but what rogue trader worth their salt didn't get up to a little mischief now and again. However, it was shortly after he arrived that something started to change. He became obsessed with the anomaly and claimed that when he was staring at it, its roiling energies would actually react to his thoughts, as if it could understand him and was trying to communicate. And over time, it eventually wormed its way into his mind and the rogue trader claimed 
that he had full-blown conversations with it in his dreams. He had this overwhelming compulsion to get closer to it. He needed to understand what this thing truly was. And so the order was given, and his fleet pressed forward. However, his crew did not share his enthusiasm, as the records that they kept showed a mounting sense of fear and dread. They recorded all manner of strange phenomena, odd jumps in times, entire days missing from the ship's log recorder, and even transmissions from other ships in the fleet arriving before they had even been sent. The voyage was ultimately doomed for failure, as mutiny eventually ensued. It started with a single ship that refused to press any further, and when it turned to retreat, the mad captain ordered the macro batteries of all of the other ships to fire upon it. After the ship's destruction, the fleet was split between those who saw this as their last remaining opportunity to flee with their lives, while the others were bound by debts of loyalty. This is where his logs end, so we don't really know exactly what went down, but the captain's ship was eventually discovered in 779M41, found drifting on the outer edge of a vast circle of other seemingly abandoned vessels orbiting the anomaly. Aboard the ship and frozen in time was a scene of chaos and violence where the crew tore each other apart. The captain was found barricaded within the bridge seated upon his command throne. A wicked smile played across his face and the red flicker of the Haddock's anomaly reflecting in his time-frozen eyes. When it comes to the rest of Haddock's fleet, each and every one of the four other ships suffered a suspiciously unique tragedy. Now, even though they'd escaped the Mad Captain's wrath, they had damned themselves the moment they entered this blighted region of space, and the Anomaly's curse followed them into the stars. The Hippostrom was lost shortly after in a violent warp storm, re-emerging sometime later as a feral predator, crewed by demented madmen that preyed upon shipping lanes. The Weeping Amiralis was destroyed by Xenos raiders, and the captured crew were believed to have gone on to form the slave cult of the Carmine Lamentation. The Ilium of Chardon, on the other hand, disappeared into the warp for many years, before reappearing once again as a derelict space hulk in 779M41. However, when the Death Watch boarded the vessel to investigate, the warp engine suddenly flared to life, disappearing back into the Immaterium, the members of the kill team never being seen again. However, the massive mining vessel known as the Dracaena perhaps suffered the most mysterious fate of all. Her wreck was discovered on a rogue moon found adrift at the edge of the Haddock's anomaly, but this was no ordinary crash site. In fact, it seemed like the ship had been surgically dismembered, each piece being distributed equally spaced across the moon's surface, covering an area of some eight square leagues. They were set in a very meticulous order and resembled cogs of a giant clock. Perhaps even more disturbing was the fact that the remains of all 15,000 crewmen were also discovered. Their bodies had been arranged in neat rows, all their organs laying out in the dust beside them, and configured like a surgeon's anatomical chart. And possibly, despite the many years that had passed, their flesh showed no signs of decomposition. What unknown force could have been powerful enough to dismantle such a massive ship in this way, but also delicate enough to do the same with so many bodies? And perhaps the more mysterious and unnerving question, for what sinister purpose was the vessel and her crew sacrificed? Many years have passed, and despite exhaustive efforts by the collective scholars of the Imperium, the Haddock's anomaly proves to be a mystery that defies all logical explanation and attempts at classification. The vast majority of expeditions that have set out to study it have been met with unprecedented disaster. The second the scholars believe that they may have made some kind of headway into unlocking its secrets, the anomaly twists and contorts into a somehow even more strange and esoteric form. It is described as a wound in reality, a cancer upon the region, a monstrous heart palpitating in the void that expands and recedes arrhythmically absorbing entire star systems with every breath that it takes. Any star caught in its expanding roiling energy becomes a clotted red orb that mimics the anomaly itself. Around its perimeter exists a veritable army of ghost vessels, ships that seem to have been locked within a tide of chronal disturbances, frozen with no hope of escape. However, this is not to say that we haven't learned anything about it, but those few truths that the Imperium has managed to gleam have only served to deepen the anomaly's mystery. Now, based on the time-distorting projections the anomaly creates, impossibly, 
it seems as if this thing serves as a conduit that is leaking time itself into the galaxy from another dimension. One of the strangest things of all about the anomaly is that on multiple occasions, it has been documented as actually having moved to a different region of Jericho's reach, as if it is somehow sentient and able to crawl its way across the void to better spread its corrupting influence. It's true that the anomaly poses a danger to anyone that would draw near it, but potentially those that are most affected by it are Imperial Navigators and Astropaths. With the Navigators, it's because the anomaly somehow is able to mimic the light of the Astronomicon perfectly, and making warp travel anywhere near it next to impossible. Many of them that have attempted to sail the void in its vicinity have been driven into a state of irreparable madness and corruption. Over time, many of these individuals would come together and form a cult known as the Cyclopean Congregation, a renegade institution of heretical navigators and other voidfarers that worship the anomaly and seek to unlock its mysteries. As they are capable of using the anomaly as a guide instead of the Astronomicon, the cult is able to safely navigate through Jericho's reach, but even more impressively, the warp here seems to favor their unholy mission as when they set off for a journey that should take weeks or months to complete, they often arrive at their destination seemingly instantaneously. The cult foretells of a coming age of chaos and despair, of a time when the light of the Astronomicon will be snuffed out, leaving the unbelievers scrambling in the abyssal dark. The cult preaches that the only hope of salvation comes from the anomaly that it will replace the old as a new guiding crimson light that will grow to such an extent that it sheds its blood-red radiance across every star throughout the Milky Way. Those who debase themselves before its unholy splendor will be the masters of this new age. Astropaths operating within Jericho's reach are subjected to a particularly disturbing phenomena that emanates from the region's most infamous ghost ship, the Limitless Grasp a cursed ship doomed to relive its tragic destruction over and over. Witnesses who have seen the phenomena firsthand tell of an elegant merchant void ship, its hull a masterwork of illustrious silver and gleaming brass that, without warning, translates from the warp into the open void. Shortly after it appears, it begins to broadcast on all frequencies, telling its tragic tale to anything and anyone that's willing to listen. The broadcast always starts the same, the ship identifies itself by name and says that it's a free trader under the command of Chartist Captain Olympia. The ghostly voices then proceed to ask for permission to enter the orbit of a planet named Veronis, which, quite frankly, is a world that simply doesn't exist, one that there is no record of and doesn't appear on any of the charts in Jericho's reach, but the voices seem to indicate that it should be right there. After this, the broadcast cuts out for a few minutes before a woman's voice can be heard requesting an audience with someone named the Pharaonic Eminence, the Sanguine Oligarch. There's another period of silence, but when the broadcast comes back on again, it synchronizes with the anomaly itself. It emits a burst of baleful crimson energy that saturates everything in the surrounding area. The broadcast is filled with utter chaos, gut-wrenching screams of abject horror as the crew bears witness to a horrifying celestial phenomena consuming a planet that only they can see. The ship, which up until this point is always just floating in the void, suddenly has its engines flare to life and banks hard as if trying to avoid incoming catastrophe. And then, without fail, during each and every one of its ghostly appearances, the limitless grasp is ripped apart, as if by the hands of an invisible, wrathful giant. What makes the manifestations of this ship so particularly dangerous is the secondary phenomena known as the Lamentation Wave. In the ship's final moments, its chief astropath managed to transmit a single message, a cry of abject terror and pain that echoed out far and wide across the warp. Although harmless to you or I, other astropaths who come into contact with the signal are overwhelmed by the final agonized thoughts of their dying counterpart, his words surging through and overloading their minds. Some are driven irreparably insane, whereas others take their own lives rather than continue to exist in a galaxy where they risk intercepting that terrifying signal once again in some future expedition. Weeks may pass, or maybe months, or sometimes years, but without fail, the limitless grasp always appears again in the exact same location, always in the exact same moment in time before her crew died screaming in the void. 
Records indicate that although rogue trader Haddix was the first to document the anomaly's existence, he had not actually been the first to witness it, as it was believed to have first manifested in 656 M40, where in the exact same moment it came into existence, it was somehow visible all the way across the Ultima segmentum. And this shouldn't have been possible. Light doesn't travel instantaneously, but its violent birth was witnessed by untold billions. No one knows how the anomaly was created, but there are several theories. One account links it back to a decadent and corrupted hive world, that if its records are to be believed, the corrupted lords of this world had begun to dabble in forbidden blood rites, their fell sorcery serving as the catalyst for the anomaly's birth. Imperial astrologers, on the other hand, claim that the anomaly was the result of a particularly profane galactic alignment that saw a confluence of forces rip the void in half. The final theory that carries any form of weight comes from the psychically gifted individuals that have attempted its study and, in return for their effort, were granted maddening visions. Those who remain sane enough to speak share a warning that the anomaly served only as a precursor to a far more terrifying galactic event that would see the entirety of Jericho's reach destroyed before spreading out into the rest of the galaxy. Now, needless to say, the area surrounding the anomaly is incredibly dangerous and restricted to ships of only the highest clearance, such as those belonging to the Inquisition and the Death Watch. Even still, this hasn't prevented a whole host of rogue traders from infiltrating the region, hoping to strike it rich, excavating the lost ships frozen in its orbit. However, none have ever returned. We may never know the true nature of the Haddock's anomaly, what it is, how it was created, or what its existence ultimately means for our galaxy. Is it simply a new form of warp rift, a portal to a different dimension, or some form of interdimensional sentient being that has malevolent intentions for our universe? What do you think it could be? Let me know all of your crazy theories down in the comment section below. And be sure to tell me if you know of any other spooky grimdark mysteries from Warhammer 40k that you'd love to hear me talk about. Anyways, that's all I had to say about this particular subject. Big thanks to everyone who supports the work that I do, and I will catch you all in the next one.